Yo, 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 what's up, peoples? We are here with uh, Prophecy of Son of Hollywood.com, you know what I'm saying? And we are chilling with a super producer, blowing up the spot in the world right now, Mr. Cannon Cross, aka Caviar, aka the dude with that rock hard Cavi, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, what up with yeah. you, bro? How you doing, man? We know you, uh, you, you actually uh, living it up on some good news right now, right? Yeah, man, I'm actually enjoying this beautiful day. The day started off kind of gloomy out here in California, but now the, the 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 coast has blown those clouds away, man. The sun and popped out, and you know it's a lovely day out here, man. I'm good. So, uh, so listen, man. Okay, you are basically. Uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say silent spawn because everybody's been hearing you, but. Um, you are a spawn of the entire West Coast gangster rap movement that uh, culminated with N.W.A. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that that is correct. That's can, correct. Can you tell us about uh, how it was that you know you were about twelve years old and you know you were kicking it with N.W.A. and Easy E basically convinced you or or just because of what he was showing you with music. You decided at that moment, at 12 years old, you were like, you know what, I'm going to stop banging and I'm going to do this music. Can you tell us what it was in that moment that changed your mind and what it was that Easy, you know what I'm saying, may have said to you or did that just clicked in your head as a 12-year-old and, and you realized that this was your path? Oh, yeah, of course, of course. It wasn't, and it wasn't, it wasn't just Easy. It, it was a good friend of mine, man, DJ Train. Um, uh, well, you know, I, got, I tell people this story all the time, you know, this is, this is my famous story, but it's like... You know, we, we were out on the block just hanging out, you know, just doing, doing basically doing a, a bunch of the knucklehead stuff that, 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 that the kids do out here, man. We had no recreation at the time. It was just nothing to do but hang out, gang bang, sell dope, do, do, you know, do all the BS that uh, young dummies do. And um, at the, you know, I want to say it's the beginning, is it maybe the beginning phases of, of what we all know as NWA and all this, this whole gangster rap movement. Um, I was blessed to be able to be pulled in the studio by my man DJ Train and EZ. Uh, we would go to a studio called Audio Achievements out in Torrance, California. That's where they recorded all the famous, you know, all the famous records that everybody knows today, all the, all the NWA albums and the DLC albums. Uh, you know, and that, that pretty much inspired me, man. You know, I, saw, I saw my man make so much money. From DJing, and I'm like, why am I selling dope? Why am I doing this? You know, let me let me change my life around. Let me, you know, give this a try. Here. And I really didn't know what I was getting into. And um, he just started bringing me to the studio with him, and I saw Brad saw him, you know, create these records that that, that shocked the whole world. You know, and it just like, basically I got bit by the by the bug, man. And I, you know, really got interested, and I started taking it more and more serious, and uh, started steering away from the streets a little bit more and more, and, and into the studio more. And, no, that was the birth again. Nice, nice, nice. So that's basically where you began, and you started working with you know all the heavyweights that we know, like Cube, Doc, Dre, Yella, and all of that. And that must have been an amazing experience for you as 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 a kid coming up. Um, t tell us real quick, what what was that like as as NWA was blowing up the spot, and you were like a kid growing up un under their wing? What how how did that make you feel then, and and what were you seeing? For one, man, I'm going to take it back even just before that. Like, I remember seeing a young Snoop Dogg back then coming to DJ Train's house before he was Snoop Dogg. Uh, Easy, a lot of people don't know that Easy E signed Will I Am back then. So, Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas used to be around us too. He was Will 1X, you know, back then, you know, from the At Band clan, the group they had. Right. <laughs> and uh, it, was just, it was just crazy seeing a lot of that um, transpire, man. Just seeing, see, I mean, you know, take place, the, the, the energy. That was going on, like you know, you see a record be made and you see the response of everyone. So that was, I think, that was the big shock to see these guys make a record and to see it shock the whole world when they say fuck the police or say something that nobody was willing to, you know, go there with. They, they, they were pushing the envelope, you know. Now, now, how did you start working with Barry Hankerson at Black Round Entertainment? Okay, that came later on in my career. Um, I started doing these tapes as, as I got a name for myself with the caddy, with the caddy mix tapes and everything. I was putting out the caddy tapes and everybody would know, you know, I would make these tapes and I would name people's names in it so that I could get them to buy the tapes. So I would name everybody in the neighborhood and all that, you know? Yeah, right. And, yeah, I would name everybody in the neighborhood and then just try and really 
uh, you know, get everybody interested in it, and they start getting it through my name. And once that happened, I was like, okay, I got to build my name up enough to you know, start selling all my big tapes. And then, and I think it was, say, 98, 99, I caught the attention of a few of the A&Rs over at Virgin, and uh, Black Brown had just got a new deal. Which, and this is another funny thing, I, I actually met Barry Hankerson a few years before that, and I was going to do a deal, but I was in a group. I was gonna be in a, I was gonna be in a group, but I was in a group, and uh, he wanted me to, you know, go solo, and I didn't want to leave my partner at the time, but I eventually ended up doing it, and um, you know, I ran back into Barry years later through some of the A and R's, and they said, yo, they just got this deal, and they want, you know, they're gonna sign me, um, as an artist, and then, you know, they didn't even know I was a producer at the time, so then I, you know, I remember going into this meeting to a studio called Soundcastle, and as I go into the meeting. I see Aaliyah, I see Misty, I see Timberland, I see Genuine, all these people that I'm like, oh, bro, okay, wow. <laughs> it was a no-brainer for me to want to sign the deal. I was like, I'm going to do this deal because, I, you know, just off the strength that I'm going to be able to work with Timbo and, and, and build this relationship with all these people. So that's what it was. That's how I got to meet Aaliyah and, and Timberland and build a relationship with Misty and everybody that I have to And you're even still working with Timbo. You just recently did a track with him, right? Yeah, me and Timbo are working, man. He, he has a new artist named Brasco, man. We're working on Brasco and uh, another artist uh, that he's about to start working with named KGB. She's a female, so and on top of that, he's going to, you know, lace me on my new album with a, with a, with a joint or two. And uh, who knows with the, with the you know, man, we may make another CeeLo record together. I don't know. It's going to be big, though, whatever we do. Nice, nice. Now, can you tell us uh, anything about your experiences of knowing Aaliyah? Um, my experiences of Aaliyah, man, she was a sweet girl, you know, she, she had her, she was a diva, you know, at the same time, but she was a regular person, just like anyone else, she was, she definitely had the star quality, she lit up the room when she walked in the room, um, she had this, you know, this mystique about her that was, that was very, that was, you know, like I say, it was just a star quality, you could be around her and you just felt like I'm, I'm around this, this presence that has, has, uh, commanding all this attention, you know, she was really cool. We, you know, and funny at the same time. The memories I have her, she always cracked the joke. Now, now when, when she left us, what what was going on around at Blackground at that time? Like, what what happened there? Well, the label, we were all in, in, in transition at the time. Um, at the time of her death, I was actually mixing and about to master my album. I just had a, my single with Timberland was about to drop. Uh, we were sh about to shoot the video. Uh, Eric White was about to shoot my video. So it was like a lot of Tank's album. He was in, uh, working on his second album. Um, and a lot of people don't know that Aaliyah's album, that album, uh, the r album with Rock the Boat, that was supposed to be a double album. So I had a few tracks that was, that was going to be on that album. They were going to make that album. But, um, yeah, it ends up, you know, our untimely death. God bless made her. That, you know, we all love Aaliyah, you I know what I'm that. saying? <laughs> so so yeah. now, man, you are uh, stepping onto the scene even further. Now you got CeeLo Green totally just basically uh, hit you up and was like, look, I want you to be doing my new album. And, you know, right now CeeLo is at the height of a very powerful game for you know, unfortunately, for those who are just getting to know him now, don't realize he's been running game and hip hop for damn near 20 years now. You know what I'm saying? And and he's blowing up on the worldwide scene now. And and yeah. man, you about to do his whole next album? Yeah, exactly. I'm about to do that, man. We about to go in on this new CeeLo album and the new Goody Mob album. I can say it feel good. Uh, once again, CeeLo is not just an artist that I met like through some A and R through some manager. That's happened to be one of my one of my partners, man. I've been knowing him for many years. Since the Goody Mob days, back when I first went to Atlanta with Above the Law. So we've always had a, a you know, the first time CeeLo and the Goody Mob ever came to the concert, I used to work at a record store called Underworld, and they came to Underworld Records, and I met them there again. And, you know, so we always kept bumping heads. And, nice. You know, now that he's in the position he's in, um, he's one of the realest cats I've met in this game. Um, uh, I was working with him last year before before the Fuck You song came out. We were working on that album, and uh, I didn't get to make it on that album, but... He picked tracks from me then, and he was like, yo, I'll start this next album. You're definitely going to be on it. You know, I, I got you, and put these tracks to the side for me. Nice. As time goes by, you know, that's why I say he's a real cat, because he can get a track from anyone in the world right now. But, you know, for me to, for him to even consider me and to be real and, and keep his word and say, yo, I'm, I'm going to come back and holler at you, Cabby. 
and, and to do that, um, you know, I respect him for that. That's he's, a, he's a tremendous talent, incredible talent. You know? that, that's awesome, man. That's 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 going to be a great work, man. So, uh, tell us about your experience growing up in Compton. Man, like just like everybody else, it sounds like the same broken record. If I say the experience <laughs> growing up in Compton, it's the same thing that's going on right now, and it's maybe even you know a little more crazier now. Um, just you know, it was just really you know, at the time we grew up, like I said, it was no recreation. It was no, uh, you know, we didn't even have really the break dancing. You had the gang bang, shit, or get off the pot. It was no, you know, you tried to break dance, tried to have a little bit of the hip hop thing, but we we lost uh, like uh, a big chunk of that due to the gang banging and the gang violence and stuff that's still going on. And you know, real, real, real deal. You know, now parents you- smoke, uh, parents in the penitentiary, parents on crack. Uh, Living with aunts and grandparents, and, and you know, moving around city to city—that's what it was like, you know. And now y'all are making. It was still wasn't all bad. It was a lot of good times, a lot of fun times, a lot of golden great things too. So. And now, not all bad. I don't regret it. And now y'all are making the hottest, most soulful hip hop and music for the whole world to hear. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, so can you tell us about um, what what brought you and Joe Jonas together? I know you and Joe Jonas are now going to be working on a track, right? Yeah, now Joe Jonas, that's a, uh, I can tell you about that. I'll give you a brief uh, little something about that. Um, Joe is managed by my boy Jay. And, you know, Jay has been around me since the black ground days. He's, he's, a great, he's a great dude. He manages Joe Jonas and Tank and a few other people. And um, he just reached out to me. He said, Gabby, I've been following you, man. You've always kept it real with me since I came to L.A. And I first got here, he said, I told you if I ever did and I will hook you up and look out for you. He said, I'm managing a few big artists now, and I know your music has grown, so let me hear what you're working with. You know, I played him once, and he's like, yeah, I like that. He said, but can you, and I, I want to actually give a shout to my man Jay because he, he helped me step up and change my whole creative uh, process with, with uh, going into the Euro style and, and, and working on some dubstep and doing stuff like that. So I have nice. a lot of new music that I think is going to change you know, shock a lot of people to know that I've done it, you know, once it comes out, so. You know what, H- have you seen that, that dub stepper nonstop, the dude who's basically, like, going to be considered the greatest dub stepper there ever was? Oh, no, I haven't seen it. Oh, so, okay, so you got to check him out on YouTube. He He's like, this guy has discovered whole new ways of just human movement that's just not even human anymore, you know what I'm saying, And he's and he's that ill with it. I'd like to see one of your dubstep tracks, with that dude dancing to one of the, one of the tracks doing a video, man, you you love it too. Trust. Yeah, that's what's up. And then I'm actually going in the studio today to do a track with uh, a friend of mine. Her name is Katie Arbear. She's working with David Guetta. And, nice. uh, you know, he's big. He's like DJ Tiesto. He's very big. And um, they're actually going to be renting my studio for me today to do some work there at the Vault in Hollywood. So that's, you know, a lot of people come out here and work at the Vault, the Vault Studios Hollywood. You guys, they on Twitter, any of your folks on Twitter, they can follow the Vault Studios on Twitter or follow me at Mr. Caviar on Twitter, M-R-C-A-V-I-A-R, Mr. Caviar, or at Vault Studios on Twitter. Nice.